Hi, this is Michael Drob, and I'm here to give you an overview of EasyPrompter Pro version 3. Before we start this overview, I'd like to mention that we'll be going over some of the more advanced features in separate videos, so look for those below. When you first open EasyPrompter, you'll see this screen. On the left you have the script management section, and on the right you have the script editing section. Let's go uh, try to edit a script. So first I'm going to type some text. Okay, and if you ever used any sort of word processing software, this should be very familiar to you. Up on top you have your standard formatting tools where you can bold and italicize text. You can also change the color or the background of text, and you can change alignment. There are a few things here that are a little unusual that you may not have seen. First you have the clear format button here, which removes all formatting. So for instance, um, you've changed some colors perhaps, or maybe you pasted this from a web, uh, the text may come in looking something like this. So if you want to reset everything, you could just highlight all the text, click the reset button, and everything's back to normal. Uh, the other two features are specific to EasyPrompter. Uh, first is the ability to insert a one second pause into your script. This is useful if you need to take a breath or if you need to cue somebody or simply to control the pace of the script. The other button is used to insert markers. We'll go over that feature in a separate video. Once you're done editing your text, you need to save it. And the way you do that is you give it a name and you hit save. Your script will appear on the left side. Let's take a look at the script list section. This is fairly straightforward. Uh, you can search for scripts by keywords. You can also sort. By default, it's going to show you the most recently modified scripts first. So the script you just worked on will be at the top. However, you can also sort by creation date or by title. Uh, you'll notice a little star next to each of the entries. This will let you mark favorites. So if you have, let's say, 100 different scripts in your library and you're working on three of them at the moment, you can set those as favorites and turn on the favorites filter so you don't see the whole list. And uh, finally, you're able to delete scripts by clicking this trash icon and confirm. Now let's take a look at script playback. I selected a script from my list um, and now that it's all edited, let's go ahead and hit start prompter. This is where you control the playback for your script. Let's take a look at some of the options here. On the left, you have the eyeline indicator, which will help your talent keep their eyes in the right location to be aligned with the camera. If you're reading your script strictly for audio, obviously this doesn't matter as much, but it's still helpful because it'll help you keep pace. The eyeline indicator can, can be dragged up and down to find a position that's comfortable for you. On the bottom, you have the playback controls, and I'd like to go over these in a little bit of detail, and we'll have more videos to go into more advanced options. On the left, you have your standard play, fast forward, and rewind buttons. These work as you'd expect. Um, let's take a look at that. Next to that, you see the next and previous marker buttons, and as I mentioned before, the marker feature will be uh, in a separate video. And then you have the reset button, which will uh, reset the script and go back to the top. The next button adjusts the speed at which the prompter is played back. This is useful to adjust while the script is playing. You can drag it forward and back uh, to find a comfortable speed for you. The font size button will allow you to adjust the on-screen text so that you can comfortably see it from any distance. Before we move on to settings, I'd like to point out the top bar of the controller. By default, when you start playback, the controller will auto-hide. However, you also have the option of hiding it by clicking on the top bar. If, on the other hand, you'd like to always keep the controller open, click the lock icon on the right to lock it in place. Let's take a look at the settings. You'll notice that the settings panel is split into a few sections. You have text settings, display settings, theme, and control settings. Let's go over them one by one. In text settings, you'll notice the first thing is line height. This will help you adjust the spacing between lines on the screen and can also help with pacing of the script. Next is the all caps checkbox. It'll toggle between capital and normal display and some people find all caps more convenient to read, especially at a distance. The following feature is break on sentence end and what this will do is put a space or a, a little vertical space after every sentence. Next, you'll see the single and dual monitor options. The single monitor option is what you're seeing on screen right now. Dual monitor is something I'll go over in a separate video, but to quickly explain it, it allows you to show the script synchronized on two different screens, and this is particularly useful for professional studio environments. Moving down the list, you see screen margin, 
And what this does is help you adjust the margins on the left and right of the script window. It's full if your monitor is too wide for the field of view and you want to limit uh, the eye movement of the talent on screen. Next, you'll see the show timer checkbox. And as you can see here, there is a timer in the bottom right corner of the screen. Uh, this will show you the remaining time of your script. If you prefer to remove it, just uncheck that checkbox and it will no longer show up. However, you'll also notice there's a progress bar at the very top of the screen that moves along with the script. The next two options are flip vertical and flip horizontal. And what these are used for is for proper teleprompter setups where you have a mirror in front of a camera. Uh, depending on the location of the mirror and the screen, this will give you options to flip the text so that it's displayed correctly to the talent. For those of you in studio environments where you want to limit the amount of light entering the camera, there's a high contrast theme available, which will get rid of any sort of uh, visual embellishments and give you just pure black and pure white uh, for minimal reflection. Under control settings, we see remote control and keyboard shortcuts. Remote control allows any smartphone or other internet connected device to act as a remote for easy prompter. I'll go into the details of remote operation in a separate video. Finally, keyboard shortcuts allows you to set custom shortcuts for various functions of EasyPrompter. Uh, this also allows you to configure presentation remotes and control surfaces to work with EasyPrompter as well. Simply select the function you'd like to control and hit the desired key. I'm going to remap the play key to the letter F on my keyboard. Now if I hit F, you see it's toggling play in the prompter. And um, I'd like to set this back, so if you'd like to go back to default settings, go back into the menu and click Reset to Defaults. Now, if you'd like to edit your script further, you could hit Edit Script, and you'll be back to your editing screen, or you can just double-click anywhere in the prompter window, and you'll be taken back to the edit screen as well. Thanks for your interest in Easy Prompter Pro. Please check out the other tutorials for more great tips. Thank you.